What's up guys? Welcome back to Angle Grinders and Ideas. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to modify Chrysler 300M ignition coils for use on your first or second gen six bolt or seven bolt Mitsubishi 4G63 engine. Check it out. So to do this, you've gotta make a couple changes to the coil as it comes. Now I got these from Rock Auto and I will put the part number in the description below. These are like $34 a piece and obviously you need four of them. You're also gonna need some Toyota connectors and you gotta make a couple modifications to the coil, the ignition coil itself. Now, for starters, we gotta cut these bolts off. These aren't gonna work. They've got this washer that's like press fit on here. It's not gonna come off, so you gotta get rid of that. So you just pull down right here and you can just cut this with an, an angle grinder. You can cut it with whatever you want. I use angle grinders for obvious reasons. Secondly, we're gonna have to cut the boot down. The boot is way, way too long. It will actually bottom out long before the top of the ignition coil is sitting in its proper position. There's a couple things that are gonna dictate how long your boot length will be. Everything else is gonna be the same regardless. So we're gonna, we're gonna cut the bolts off no matter what, and we're gonna trim the boot no matter what, and we're gonna trim the spring no matter what. But how much you trim that depends on which valve cover you're running and which coil pack cover you're using. Now, OEM covers in a different plate are gonna be different. This is a frontline fab valve cover and a frontline fab coil on plug plate. This is what it looks like when you get it in the box. It's got these little stupid bolts on it. It doesn't have any wiring connectors on it and then it's got its boot and inside there is actually a spring. Now the finished version looks something like this. This is a Toyota two wire connector and I will put the part number in the description below for that as well. And then this is the cut down boot and inside I have a cut down spring. So this right here actually fits over the top of the plug and the boot I just cut with a razor blade. So I'll show you more about how to do that in a second, but this is what you're, this is what you're aiming for. This is your final product. Here's another comparison angle of what it looks like with the modified version versus the one that just comes in the box. This is how much taller it is, and obviously you can see it's never gonna work and it looks ridiculous. So with the coil unplug plate in place, you need to tuck this wire back, but you can see there's, there's no way that would ever go down. So that's what you're trimming the boot for, and the spring ends up just being super long, so you end up just cutting that because you have to. Now, with the ignition coil out, that one out of place, my valve cover is just loosely sitting on here because I got a lot of other stuff going on, but it isn't going to get any higher or lower. That's the fixed position. Now with this one in position, you can see this sits on top. These wires get out of the way here. And with a little bit of force, it does sit down on them. Now I want to have a little bit of resistance so I know that it's pushing these coil packs all the way down on the plug so I have a good solid connection. The wires themselves will pull out the side depending on how you are going to route them, whether you're on a stock valve cover or not. I believe they still come out this way regardless, so that is something to think about. You wanna make sure that you don't smash them when you're test fitting your coil packs. Now I'm quickly going to cut off the other studs from the rest of the coil packs, and then I will move on to the boot and I'll show you how to cut that. Safety first. If you do it with an angle grinder, one way you can do it is just take some pliers, vice grips. I recommend vice grips because they're a little bit more sturdy. Clamp it to the end of it, and then just be careful not to cut all the way through into your coil pack. It's not, not hard to do if you're pushing it all. And then just lightly graze it with the disc until it cuts all the way through. Just take your time. You only got four of these, eight bolts. Crazy day and a crazy night with some, some crazy views and some, some crazy sights. I've been crazy dark, but still. All right, and we're done. There's the other three. I already did the first one earlier before, as you've already seen. So now we can move on to cutting the boots. Okay, so to cut this thing down the length, you only need two things. I got a pair of dykes, and I have a freshly removed from the package razor blade. It's just nice and sharp, makes it easier. Now, to get these things down the length, you've gotta measure your cover. Like I said, please do not just eyeball it like I have here and try to get close, because if you cut it too short, it's not gonna reach, it's gonna fit like garbage, and it's probably not gonna work very well. So, what I'm gonna do is, you can see this actually comes off, and if you just pull on it, there you go, it's removed. Now it has a spring inside that runs the length of the inside of the boot, and then this is your coil right here. Now, you can grab the spring and kind of remove it, and it just pulls right out. And it's the exact same length on both sides. Everything about it is the same. So there's the thicker section where it sits into the boot tightly, and then there's like the smaller section that sits on top of your plug on one side and inside your ignition coil on the other. So we're gonna set this aside for a second, and I'm gonna pull off the one I already did. Now once you get yours to length, like I did with this one, you can do the same thing I'm doing here. You just make them all the same length. Pull this one off. Set it aside, I'll pull the spring out of the middle, and it pulls out. So you can see how much different the length of this one is compared to the other spring. So it's a significant change in length. I've actually pretty much removed this entire section off that part of it. I'm gonna set the springs aside, I'm gonna go ahead and pull all of them out. I'm 
and there we go. We got all four springs out, we got all four boots ready to cut. The reason I say take the springs out ahead of time is so you don't damage the spring or cut it down or cause a kink in it or anything like that to where it doesn't want to sit on the spark plug properly once it's finished. So you can see the difference. It's a pretty significant amount. And I'm just gonna set it right next to it and kind of eyeball it a little bit. But I'm gonna push this now. If you have a workbench, that's great. I like to do stuff on the floor, I always have. And it's a very dirty floor, so you're welcome. Just push it flat so it's not, you're not gonna slash it at an angle. And just try to cut as close as you can to the first boot that you cut. There's your old section, throw it out of the way, throw it in the trash, it doesn't matter. Now for the spring, set your newly cut spring up next to your uncut spring, your unmodified spring, and you can see exactly where the difference is in their heights. So I'm just gonna take my dikes right here, slide it right over. Now you can count the coils if you wanna be super, super accurate. Now these springs do stretch, thankfully. Kinda get it where you want it, so it looks like to me, it comes off and it's like about a full coil. Trim it off and there you go. Now I've got two springs the same length. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of these. I'll fast forward that section and then I'll show you how they fit when we're done. That way I want it so I got it now it's all on you. Okay, so I got all my boots cut, I got all my springs cut, and I've got all my bolts out. So we can put them back together, we can put our connectors on, and we can set them in there so we can check our position and make sure that they're all at the same height. I know you can see it, but we're just gonna double check fitment one more time. So you take your spring and you slide it in the exact same way. Now, I chose to do it so that this made to the top of the spark plug. You can do it the other way if you want, but it's easier to shove this up into the coil because it has like a little like a locking area and it kind of just like sits inside there like that. So I'm gonna take it right here. I'm gonna slide it inside the boot. I'm just gonna leave it until it's poking out. Now you can see it's very difficult to see, but it is poking out a little bit on that side and it's poking out right here. And the idea is that the top of the spark plug will go up inside the boot a little bit and the spring will sit and make contact with it and you'll have a good solid spark. So I'm gonna hold my finger on the bottom of the spring like this, slide it into the top of the coil, or the bottom of the coil rather, and then spin the boot around until it locks into place. Now you'll see the spring stick out the bottom, but the spring is designed to compress on both sides and through the center, so it will push all the way in and sit on your plug. All right, so we got all our coils reassembled. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the extra electrical connectors that I have. I'll throw those on the coils and we'll get them lined up and make sure they fit. Real quickly, one thing I forgot to mention before we put them on the engine, I like to open the holes up a little bit. So I take a 3 8 drill bit and I just very slowly hold it and I drill into it. Now please be very careful. Do not drill through your fingers. Do not drill through your palm. Don't make any contact with your body. So just hold it very firmly, spin the drill slowly and let it kind of run inside. Now it will catch the rubber and it may try to pull it out of your hand. So just slowly drill into it and allow it to open the hole up a little bit so it fits over the top of the plug with a little bit more space. I can feel it kind of pull on some of the rubber and it, it's hard because when it's done, it's not going to look like the hole actually opened up, but it will fit better. You can see some rubber coming out. Just hold it for a second. Don't go too deep because you don't want the rest of the spring to fit super loose inside. Pull it out and that'll be the clearance that you need. Okay, so I've got all my ignition coils in place. I kind of just roughly set them here. I've got my Toyota connectors plugged in and they're all trimmed and then I got my cover sitting here. Now, depending on which coil on plug cover you have that works with the 300 amp coils, it may or may not be threaded on the backside so that you can actually bolt them to it. I believe these are M5 by uh, 1.0 or 0.8 probably, probably M5 by 0.8 but I don't, I don't know, so don't hold me to that. And obviously yours is gonna be a little bit different. And even if it's a frontline fab one, it could be different depending on if he's changed thread sizes over the years and different iterations. So obviously just go to Ace and check it or figure it out. But what you wanna do is you wanna make sure the coil pack will sit all the way down. So you've got this rubber ring right here, and I wanna make sure the base of it will bottom out against the valve cover when I put pressure on it. And you can see it sits right where it needs to. Now, if that's too much for you or you don't like that much pressure, you can obviously cut it a little bit shorter. It's really up to you. But I've got these all situated to where they were all sit down and sit nice and flush with the top of this valve cover. And that's what I want. I wanna make sure it's making a nice good connection with the spark plug all the way across the board on all four cylinders. And they all sit down and obviously they're all the same length as they should. So that's pretty much it guys, that's how you do it. That's how you modify a Chrysler 300M coil to work on your first or second gen six bolt or seven bolt Mitsubishi 4G63. Thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. Please like this video and comment if there's something else you'd like to see or if you want me to do another how-to for another 4G63 oriented project or anything in between that you think I might have access to. Thanks for watching, peace out.